Samuel Alito was appointed to the United States Supreme Court by President George W. Bush back when it seemed like Roe versus Wade was the settled law of the land. But it was Samuel Alito who wrote the opinion last year overturning Roe versus Wade and approvingly quoting ancient British prosecutors who believed witches should be subject to the death penalty. Such was the legal scholarship in that opinion. Justice Alito granted an interview to the Wall Street Journal apparently to fight back against the ways in which the Supreme Court is being, as he sees it, attacked these days. In the interview, he calls it, quote, a concerted attack on the court and on individual justices. He says, we are being hammered daily, and I think quite unfairly, in a lot of instances. Really? What do you mean in a lot of instances? Doesn't that mean that it's fair? In the other instances, Justice Alito did not say what criticisms he thought were fair, but here's a clue. When asked about the ethics challenges facing Justice Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito simply said, I will stay away from that. Joining us now, Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island. He's a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee and chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. Senator, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, so the Chief Justice will not be at the hearing tomorrow. Samuel Alito will not be at the hearing tomorrow to tell us uh, which attacks he thinks are fair, uh, which appears to be what he's saying. Uh, but it's this is the only time in, that I'm aware of in the history of the Senate that the Senate has asked to hear from the Supreme Court about ethics. And the answer is no. Yeah, it's a little bit unusual. And one of the weird things about it is that um, judges operate under a code of conduct that's in writing. It's the Judicial Code of Conduct. And Canon 4 of the Judicial Code of Conduct reads, a judge may appear at a public hearing before a legislative body on matters concerning the administration of justice. Well, he's a judge, we're a legislative body, we're going to have a public hearing, and it was going to be on the administration of justice. If, uh, if you could have uh, the chief there tomorrow, what would you want to ask him? I think I'd want to explore the argument that they make that there's nothing that can be done to put any control over the Supreme Court justice's behavior because of the doctrine of separation of powers. And I'd like to ask him questions like, well, would it offend the separation of powers if the court were to set up a place where you could file an ethics complaint? And would it offend the separation of powers if the court were to set up a place where staff attorneys reviewed the complaints and sorted through them and saw which ones merited further investigation? And would it violate the separation of powers if the court had some investigators to dig out the facts and find out what was going on? And Maybe even had somebody to offer an outside opinion like the chief judges of the circuit courts of appeal as to whether in their courts uh, the conduct would violate the rules. None of that violates the separation of powers, not even close. Uh, and I think he'd have a very hard time arguing that it did. But it would really narrow, I think, the scope of a very overbroad assertion that they're making. What, what would you say to viewers who uh, are wondering what is the future uh, of ethics at the Supreme Court. If it has gotten this far out of control now, Supreme Court is insisting that there are absolutely no controls that can be imposed, then where does this go from here? Well, one interesting check on the Supreme Court, an informal one, is the pressure from other judges. And I think the behavior of the Supreme Court is starting to alarm and frustrate and in some cases infuriate other judges. And in the grand omerta of the judicial branch of government, nobody wants to criticize them. But I know of many, many private conversations in which judges have expressed real fury that this is not being cleaned up by the court. And the difference is that they operate under the exact kind of rules that the Supreme Court could apply to itself if it wanted to. And because these are the rules that judges operate under all the time, it is clear that they don't violate the separation of powers or infringe on judicial independence because judges do it. 
Uh, what do you make of Samuel Alito's specific refusal to in any way, even in a general way, uh, defend Clarence Thomas? He, he could have said something like, I believe Justice Thomas is a perfectly ethical uh, justice. He didn't say that. Well, perhaps I, I can't read Justice Alito's mind. He's clearly a very angry man. Um, but I suspect that he's intelligent enough to realize that the problems swirling around Justice Thomas are, are real. You can't have a politically active billionaire giving hundreds of thousands of dollars in undisclosed gifts of travel and hospitality to a justice while you're paying the rent for his mother and sitting him down with <laughs> the guy at the center of the effort to capture the court, Leonard Leo, and pretend that there's nothing to that. It just is ludicrous. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, we will be watching the hearing tomorrow to see uh, what we can learn and what we can hope for uh, at the, in, the, in ethics at the Supreme Court. Thank you very much, Senator.